Hill is the center of Canada's democracy and an everlasting symbol of pride for Canadians across the country. Inside those doors, important decisions are made every day that affect our future. But here, on the grounds of Parliament Hill, it's our country's past that's displayed. Monuments and statues dedicated to telling visitors about the important stories that help shape our country. Planning and construction of Parliament Hill began in 1859, after Queen Victoria chose Ottawa as the capital of Canada. The buildings were to be built on Old Barrack Hill, 25 acres of open sloping land located in the centre of the city and overlooking the Ottawa River. In the decades that have followed, the landscape of the hill has changed and evolved with the times. By 1876, 16 years after construction began, Parliament Hill was finally completed, along with the surrounding fence and gates. However, the hill grounds remained unfinished. Then Governor General Lord Dufferin sent the Chief Architect of Canada, Thomas Seton Scott, to New York City for inspiration. He wanted Scott to meet with Central Park architect Cal Vervaux. Together, they would complete a layout of the landscape, including the present-day driveways, terraces, the main lawn, and the grounds to the sides and back of the buildings. From annual Canada Day celebrations that attract thousands of revelers, to the changing of the guard ceremony and countless protests and demonstrations, the grounds themselves offer visitors a mix of experiences and serve as an important symbol of Canadian life and values. They cover an area of more than 88,000 square meters and are enjoyed by over 1.5 million visitors every year. With its four-faced clock and magnificent presence, the most prominent feature and focal point of the Parliament buildings is the Peace Tower. Standing at 92.2 meters tall, the Peace Tower was constructed from 1919 to 1927 and was built to honor the more than 65,000 Canadian soldiers who lost their lives during the First World War. The tower houses the memorial chamber, which holds seven books of remembrance with the names of the soldiers. An enclosed observation deck below the clock gives visitors a 360 degree view of downtown Ottawa. The Peace Tower is a freestanding bell tower, unlike the original Victoria Tower that it replaced. Halfway up the tower is a small room that houses the Carillon a set of 53 bells inaugurated on Canada Day in 1927 in honor of the Diamond Jubilee of Confederation. The bells come in all different sizes, with the largest of them, the Bourdon, weighing over 22,000 pounds. Although it's certainly the largest, the Peace Tower isn't the only tribute to Canada's heroes found on Parliament Hill. Here, behind Centre Block, the Police and Peace Officers Memorial commemorates those Canadian law enforcement officers who've died in the line of duty since 1879. The inscription reads, They are our heroes. We shall not forget them. The last Sunday in September is Police and Peace Officers National Memorial Day. On this day, thousands of police and peace officers and members of the public gather on Parliament Hill to pay their respect to those fallen officers who've died in service of our country. On March 22, 1994, then Prime Minister Jean Chrétien joined over 700 police officers and relatives of slain officers to inaugurate the memorial. At the time of the unveiling, the memorial displayed the names of 227 police officers killed in the line of duty since 1879. A year later, it was expanded to include the names of slain officers from other Canadian law enforcement agencies, including the Ministry of Natural Resources, Customs and Excise, Fisheries and Oceans, and Conservation. Just a few steps away facing the Ottawa River is the Summer Pavilion, an extension of the Police Memorial. It was constructed in 1877 and was initially intended to be used as a summer retreat for the Speaker of the House. 
but in 1956, the original structure was torn down because of its poor condition. Almost 40 years later, in 1995, a replica gazebo was built thanks to a contribution from the Canadian Police Association and the Canadian Association of Chiefs of Police. Just a short distance from the Summer Pavilion lies a monument displaying the Victoria Tower Bell, one of the few remaining artifacts from the original Parliament building. Cast in 1875, the Victoria Bell was installed in the Victoria Tower in Centre Block. Shortly after midnight on the morning of February 4, 1916, the bell came crashing down into the flames which had engulfed the Centre Block. It was later recovered from the ruins and restored and put on display on the grounds of Parliament Hill. The bell is mounted on an angle to symbolize the position it was in when it fell during the fire. It's the only relic remaining from the original Victoria Tower and serves as a symbol of Canada's first House of Government. Probably one of the most well-recognized symbols on Parliament Hill is the centennial flame. The symbolic flame sits at the center of this fountain, which is located on the walkway between the Queen's Gates and the Peace Tower. On January 1, 1967, Lester B. Pearson kicked off Canada's 100th anniversary celebrations by lighting the centennial flame for the very first time. The flame is surrounded by the shields of the Canadian provinces and territories and serves as a symbol of Canada's unity from sea to sea. On the border of the fountain, you'll find engravings of the year that each province or territory joined Confederation. Fueled by natural gas, the flame itself burns day and night, year after year, and has become an important symbol of Canada's heritage. Every day, hundreds of visitors toss coins into the fountain. In 1991, Parliament passed an act ensuring that the coins go to the Centennial Flame Research Award Fund, recognizing the achievements of Canadians with disabilities. You can't walk around Parliament Hill without coming across one of 16 magnificent statues and monuments that are spread across the grounds of the hill. Each one marks an important figure or moment in Canadian history. It was the unveiling of a statue of Sir George A. Tencaltier in 1885 that marked the beginning of this type of commemoration on Parliament Hill. Since then, several more statues have been erected across the grounds, from Prime Ministers and Royalty to Canadian trailblazers. If you look closely at the Parliament buildings themselves, you'll notice the intricate carvings engraved into the stone, each one telling its own story about the development of our nation using important symbols of Canadian heritage. Carvings of foliage, real and imaginary animals, as well as the French, English, Scottish and Irish emblems can all be found engraved on the building. There are also several faces carved into the stone, rumored to belong to the workmen, politicians and architects of the time. In 1976, the Parliament buildings and public grounds were designated as National Historic Sites. Every year, over a million people visit the nation's capital to marvel at this magnificent piece of architecture and its beautiful surrounding grounds. Our parliamentary institutions serve as important national symbols that represent Canadian life and values and help tell the important stories of the men and women who shaped our country. And now you know.